Hi everyone, if you find yourself losing marks in booklet B for heat or water cycle, do continue watching as I'll be going through three important questions from the 2018 PSLE paper. First one is question 31 from the 2018 paper. A farmer measured the amount of light entering his greenhouse at four different times of the day. State at which time of the day the rate of photosynthesis is the highest and then explain your answer. Now, for photosynthesis to occur, we need three things, right? The first thing we need is light, okay? This can come from the sun or artificial lamp, etc. We also need carbon dioxide and we need water, all right? And of course, you can only photosynthesize if you have chloroplasts that contain chlorophyll. Therefore, all plants can photosynthesize and some organisms also can photosynthesize to make their own food. So looking at here, any one of these factors, the factor is only light, right? So we don't even need to think, our answer doesn't need to mention this too, okay? So if you look here, the one that has the most light is at 12 p.m. So it's a very standard answer. Now, if you're struggling to find the words, right, you know the answer is 12 p.m., then do not worry so much. If you know this, right, this word is what I, I wrote to start off with. And I actually use that as the result, okay? It's from the table given itself. So use as much words as the question provides you with. Okay, the next one is where it's a bit harder. A greenhouse needs to be kept warm on cold days and cool on hot days. Now, if I want to keep warm on cold days and cool on hot days, basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to slow down the heat flow, right? Slow down the heat flow, all right? So some greenhouses have pockets of air in their roofs to, in order for them to not become too cold or too hot. So between the two materials, we have a pocket of air. So the word air appears a lot, uh, even in the pictures itself. So the volume can be changed as air is pumped in and out of the pocket. Explain how this setup uses a property of air to allow them to keep warm on a cold day. So this is going to be the first point. What is the property of air? then we have the last one is going to be keeping warm so the property of air in fact i always tell my students as long as the question is heat and it's about air just write down this sentence just say air is a poor conductor of heat okay so i'm going to start with that air is a poor conductor of heat right now if you want to keep warm on a cold day right that means if i were to scroll up here you, you, you want to keep warm, means outside, if this is the greenhouse, right? If this is the greenhouse, it's very cold outside. You do not want to, you cannot be gaining coldness, right? So which direction is the heat going to go from? Inside is going to be hotter. So you do not want it to go out. You do not want this to happen. So having that air will slow down the heat flow from inside the greenhouse to outside. So whenever you answer heat questions, always identify which is the hotter and the colder region. If you actually written down, this is something you memorize, okay? You memorize. The question provided you with this, correct? So as a student, right, all you have to do is this heat from where to where okay so this comes from you memorizing your guidebooks you have to memorize this okay this is given right and this is where you apply your science concept right heat flows from hotter to colder region and in this case you want to slow that heat transfer down all right 36 state what is temperature now there's only two types of questions they can ask you where they want you to give a standard answer so temperature is actually a measurement right we want to measure how hot or how cold an object is so you can actually just write that as the answer okay so you can say temperature is how hot or cold um, um you must add the word measurement okay because temperature actually measures the amount of heat energy right so temperature is a measurement of the degree of hotness of an object you can also say it is a measurement of how hot or cold an object is so i think the key word here is the word measurement all right now if i ask you what is heat you will say heat is a form of energy okay heat is a form of energy 
So heat and temperature are linked, but they are not the same. All right. Okay, now the next one. Susan heated a beaker of water. She stopped heating when the water started to boil and recorded the temperature of the water every 5 minutes. So from 100 degrees Celsius, the temperature of the water started to drop. So her results are shown below. Based on the graph, state the room temperature. Now room temperature is whenever the graph goes to a straight line. So let's say ice, if I draw this a bit bigger, ice melting is here, gain heat, and then it will reach room temperature unless you boil it. So the straight line happens from this region, right? So at this temperature here, okay? So the straight line happens from here to here. So the room temperature is going to be 20. Please do not forget your units, degrees Celsius, okay? Now the last question is a bit tricky. Explain why it will be more accurate to record the temperature every minute for the first five minutes. So this question is testing you on accuracy, which is not commonly tested, okay? Um, a lot of times in exam papers, you see why you need to repeat an experiment and that's to make it more reliable. But how do I make it more accurate? So let's look at this. And the thing about this question that makes it difficult is there's no standard answer, okay? You can learn a few examples to make your life a bit easier. So if you look at 0 to 5, right, versus any point of the graph here, from 0 to 5, it drops from 100 to around 50 correct so that's a very huge drop from 5 to 10 it only drops about 10 correct then from here to here it's also about 10 and then slowly and so forth but the biggest drop happens from the first in the first five minutes so why is it more accurate because the drop in temperature or the decrease in temperature is the largest in the first five minutes temperature difference okay between our two things here between the hot water and the surroundings is the greatest first point so the rate of heat loss is the greatest so the temperature changes the most in the first five minutes so what that do, what does this actually mean if my water is 100 degrees celsius and my room temperature is 20 degrees celsius the water is going to lose a lot of heat very quickly to the surroundings but if my water is 30 degrees Celsius, room temperature is 20, this will not, this will happen slowly, okay? This has a lot of heat to basically distribute because heat wants to flow from a region of hotter to colder. And this will happen until everything is 20 degrees Celsius, okay? So to put it simply because this is one mark, the main point is this one. The temperature is changing the most in the first five minutes, okay? compared to all the other periods. So by recording it every minute, we can see how much the temperature drop is. All right. Question 39. A worker used a truck to deliver blocks of ice. A mist was seen when the ice was taken out of the truck as shown below. So as he's carrying out the ice, we have this white color mist coming out. Now, anytime you see the question mist, or sometimes they will say like white smoke, or even steam, for example. So white smoke, or if you have... Um, for Guinness, these are all in liquid state, all right? Now, why is that white mist coming out? Okay, why do we see this mist when you take out a cold block of ice? So explain how the mist was formed, two marks. This is just describing the process of describing condensation. That's it, okay? There are some keywords you need to remember. Warm water vapor, you cannot say surrounding air condensed, okay? So warm water vapor came into contact with something cooler, which is the air inside the truck. Lost heat and condensed is a buddy word, meaning it comes together. Every time you say condensed, you need to say lost heat into water droplets, all right? Now, next question, the mist disappeared after some time. Explain why. So after a while, this mist, which is cold, right, is a tiny water droplet. When it's in the warmer surrounding air, where, what happened to it? Why did it disappear? And the reason is because the surroundings outside is warmer, right? So this cold air is going to gain heat and evaporate. So the next question is actually just asking you to describe evaporation. Now, this is a very common format where the first one is describe 
condensation or even evaporation then the second one will be the other one so if here is evaporation here will be condensation and so on okay so let me type the answer for this now let's say i stopped my answer here i said the mist gained heat from the warmer surroundings and evaporated i will still not get the mark you need to tell me the state change mist is in liquid state so gain heat from the warmer surroundings and evaporated into what did it evaporate into so it'll be water vapor so do not forget to complete your answers okay sometimes students will also miss out this from here they say gain heat and evaporated but from where where do you gain heat from all right okay last question thick plastic strips were hung at the door to prevent the ice from melting so plastic now plastic is a type of a material right they're giving you the material which means i'm asking you for what property does plastic have that helps the ice to melt slower basically and this is basically whether it's a good or poor conductor of heat so all you have to say is plastic is a poor conductor of heat so how will this prevent the ice from melting so you see that when you open the plastic strip this mist forms right so by putting this plastic strip i'm basically blocking it right i'm blocking the warm air outside so let's say i change the color i'm blocking the warm air from entering okay so by preventing this i will prevent the heat gain the ice from gaining too much heat and melting all right so let me type the answer first Okay, the property is plastic is a poor conductor of heat. So we prevent warm air from entering and kept the cooler air inside. So the heat flow from warmer to cooler was reduced. Okay, so that's the science concept. So this is my, my property, right? Then this is the science concept. Preventing it from melting is the link, all right? I think A and B are standard questions, but C is slightly harder.